So the first thing you want to do before you start flushing your tank is you want to come into the breaker panel and this breaker panel may be located in the garage or it may be on the first floor of the home somewhere. Once you locate it, you're going to look for the circuit directory, which is a directory on the inside of the cover here that's going to tell you which breaker belongs to which fixture. You're going to locate the solar pump and you're going to locate the water heater breakers. In this case, my water heater is this breaker here and my solar, panel, or my solar pump is this breaker here and I've turned those off already. Very important that you do this first. So the very next thing I want to do after turning my breakers off inside is I want to make extra sure that this water pump doesn't kick on while I'm draining the tank. So the very next thing I want to do is I want to unplug this from the wall and that's going to make sure that all the power is cut to my pump. Now once I shut this off, the very next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I close the ball valve above and below it and that's simply this lever. You want to make sure that it's turned perpendicular to the pipe as you see it here. So this is currently in the closed position. If it were in the open position, it would be parallel to the pipe. All right, so the very next thing you want to do is you want to locate your supply line that comes into the tank and you want to locate your hot water line that comes from the tank and into the house. Now, for some of the water heaters, you'll see that there is an actual temperature gauge on the hot, attached to the hot water side. Now, that may not be the case for yours. In any case, the side that is warm to the touch is going to be your hot water side. Now, be careful because that metal may be very hot to the touch and you don't want to burn yourself. So be cautious when approaching that if you plan on touching the metal. Now, the very first thing you want to do once you've identified which side is the hot is you want to turn the ball valve on top of the hot water line to the off position, which is going to be perpendicular or a 90 degree angle to the pipe. Then once you do that, you're going to take the water hose that's been supplied to you and you're going to come down here to this drain valve and you're going to connect your water hose to this drain valve. Now the other end of that water hose needs to be on the landscape of the home, preferably in an area where it won't cause any substantial flooding when you dump 80 gallons of water there because that's exactly what we're going to do. Once your water hose is securely attached, you're going to open this gate valve right here all the way up by turning it counterclockwise until it won't turn anymore. Okay, now the next thing you need to know is as our tank's draining, we left this water supply on to the tank. That means it's constantly pushing fresh tap water into the tank. We did that for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that a normal water heater will have sediment down around the bottom. So by having water pressure constantly coming in, we're, we're allowing it to kind of force some of that sediment that may be there toward the bottom out, and that'll make our tank drain much more quickly. Now, the second reason we want to leave this on is because this is also going to help cool any hot water that may be in this tank so that when you do handle the water hose, it's not so hot that you can't hold on to it. Now you're gonna let this run like this for 10 to 15 minutes, no longer than 15 minutes. Uh, at the 15 minute mark, you're gonna come up here and you're going to close this ball valve and then you're going to open the hot water valve on this side. Then you're gonna go inside the home to the closest fixture, which in this particular house is a deep sink right on the other side of this wall. And you're gonna open the hot water side of the faucet up. What you're doing is you're allowing water, or as you were, air to come up into that faucet and it's going to keep, keep uh, this tank draining smoothly because all of the water that's leaving the tank will be replaced with air. So it's making sure that there's no vacuum inside the tank and your water heater will continue to drain normally until it's completely dry. Now once our tank is finished draining, you'll see no more water coming out of the hose. The first thing you want to do is you want to close this gate valve. You're going to turn it all the way clockwise until you feel it stop. Then you're going to come over here and detach the water hose from the drain. So after you've removed your water hose from the drain valve, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to come up here to the supply line and you're going to turn that on once again. Now when you do this, you have to turn it on very slowly because there's actually a plastic tube in here that's an extension of the water supply line. And if you turn it on too quickly, you can actually blow that plastic tube off. So you're gonna open it up very slowly at first and let it run for a few minutes at, at maybe a, a quarter of the way open. And then you're gonna open it up just a bit more slowly. And finally, you'll have it open all the way. Now, as soon as you get open all the way, you're gonna go inside the house and the fixture where you had the hot water turned on at, you're gonna stand there and watch that fixture because when this tank gets all the way full, water will come out of that fixture and that'll be your signal that the water tank is completely full. Now once that water tank is completely full, you can go ahead and turn off the hot water on the faucet that you left on inside the home. 
Now, the very last step sequence to this to start your water heater back up is you wanna come up here and you wanna open these two ball valves on either side of the pump. Now, if you recall, we isolated this as one of the very first steps, and now you're just gonna put this pump back in the system by making these two ball valves parallel with the pipe. Then you're gonna take the, the, the cord that you unplugged initially, you're gonna plug that back into the wall, and the very last thing that you're gonna do is walk back into the home once you get that plugged in, and you're gonna flip the two breakers off. Uh, you're gonna, excuse me, you're gonna flip them on because we turned those off in the very first step. So just make sure you turn those breakers back on and then you're all set.